being on the journey of not just discovering love, I discovered so much about myself in this, and I, I continue to discover more about myself because he waters me so well. And he pushes me out of my comfort zones because he, he sees what I'm capable of when I can't. And I totally forgot where I was going with that because I'm trying to suck in the tears again. Old me would have never imagined sitting here speaking to you about how dope my marriage is because I was that woman. I would go out of my way to bully men on the internet if I thought that they were being dicks. Mm -hmm. I, a man would tell me to smile in public and I would give him the worst RBF face. And now I recognize when I'm in public and a man goes out of his way to say, you look prettier when you smile, it's because I do. Mm. Misery does not look good on anybody. Right. And nobody wants to see somebody else miserable in life. Unless they're also miserable. Unless yeah. they're also miserable, yeah. That was beautiful. That should be a song. Oh. That was beautiful. <laughs> it, it was, uh, you, you broke down exactly pretty much what I had to go through. It's unfortunate, but I was alone in my apartment. And yeah. I was like, why... Every relationship relationship has failed. I had a great husband who mm -hmm. was, he never put his hands on me. He's never called me out my name. He never did anything but try to be the leader of the house. And I was so combative. And I, I was the one to kick him out. He wouldn't even leave. And it was like, I don't want to be with you anymore. Just get out. And then he was gone. And it was nine days later where I was like, I'm still unhappy. Yeah. Like, I'm still unhappy. What am I going to do? Go be with a new man? That's ridiculous. I had a great one. Wh how much more do you have to try to live up to? What else do you have to go get? Why well, couldn't work where I was at? And it was when, it was humbling, and I was crying, and I was like, I want to change so yeah. bad. I don't know what's wrong with me, you know? And that's why I sought out and figured out that I had BPD, so I couldn't even regulate my emotions. I had so much trauma. And although I didn't have kids i i dated men that were youtubers and they talked so bad about me on the internet and oh my God. yeah so it was like why am i picking before my husband i pick terrible men still i pick terrible ones like that what does that say about me and where my self-esteem is mm -hmm. and is that what i still want you know like, we talk about that quite a bit we do your self-worth matters we also break down that you are the common denominator in every failed relationship you've ever had. Mm -hmm. And if you've always, if you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always got. So you have to be the reason to change because if you, if you are unwilling to do so and you're trying to get somebody who has quality of character and self-worth and you're a POS, yeah. nobody's going to want to be with you. Right. So you have to do the work in between relationships, get rid of the baggage and start working on being a better person and hope that you can find somebody that's willing to match that effort. Mm -hmm. And that's where we were because we've both been married before mm -hmm. and they both failed. So like in our courting phase, when we were not actually really courting, we were doing friendship dinners and she was kind of a therapist for me and like working through things. A lot of trauma dumping. A lot, a lot. But it developed a foundation for us, and we were able to establish things that we would and would not accept in relationships so that when we did start courting, that, that shit had already been hashed out. Like, there was no um, right. need to re really rehash that conversation. But then we broke out the lists. Yeah, the lists. And we wrote down, mm -hmm. like, our expectations and put it in writing. And ha for a while, it was on our refrigerator. Like, these are, these are our jobs. This is what I'm responsible for doing. This is what you're responsible for doing. Mm -hmm. We created our check-in lists. Um, we started doing check-ins to make yeah. sure that we were okay. There was a lot of in writing expectations because then there's no, I didn't know. All right. You didn't say that. Right. It was very clear and concise. Everything was put down on paper. So, but the change was there and it, 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 it continues. It still continues. We still have to find new ways to communicate when we work through things mm -hmm. with borderline. Sometimes you will have a conversation with somebody and the things that you hear and what they say is absolutely not the same thing. It's so different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you caught that on recording yet? My husband did. That, and it was it's embarrassing a rough to listen to because I'm speaking out of straight trauma. Like it's yeah. it's not what he said, but it's it's insecurities yeah. and within me that I'm hearing. We had that on an episode where mm -hmm. after the episode I was I was fuming angry and when I went back to edit it I started crying and was like, I'm so sorry. Like this is not at all how I perceive this moment because it's on uh, film. I know your tone wasn't there. Your facial features wasn't there. Everything that I was taking in in the moment wasn't real. Wow. I was having a full-blown episode during an episode. And we ended up posting it. Yeah. And unless I was to give you the number, you would have no idea that that was mm -hmm. even a thing. 
But I was I was fuming angry afterwards because I thought that she was being very condescending and, and shitty towards me. And it wasn't yeah. at all the case. Wow. So that, that borderline thing could be very real. And that, that comes into being able to switch from an emotional process to a logical process and thinking and asking probing questions and yes, being able to communicate proper, mm-hmm. properly. So, oh, man. And for your listeners, we both have BPD. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So it, it's, it's a lot to navigate. And a lot of our disruptions boil down to, well, none of that was real. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about what we felt in the moment, what triggered it in the moment, and how we can prevent it in the future. Yeah. Right. For me, I, uh, I, uh, I went and got the healing done. And then when I came back with my husband, he was struggling heavily with his emotions now. And... I, because I was thinking more logically and being able to be level-headed, I was able to guide him. He never went to therapy to get any diagnosis or to figure out what may be wrong with him. But um, we're the extreme opposites in the sense that I'm very anxious. So if we're fighting, I'm thinking you're going to leave and never come back or I'm going to beat you to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, his is avoidance. So he doesn't even vocalize how he's feeling That's at all. That's most men. And then, yeah. And then... It explodes in, dis- in other ways. Um, yeah. He just tries to completely avoid his emotions, thinks that nobody cares at all. So it's, but I, I've been, uh, I learn and then help him. And so that's what's been helping us is, um, and his, he's being willing to yeah. intake, intake it and learn from me, you know, because he doesn't deal. even know, you know. Him being willing to receive the information is a key component to that. You yeah. have to remember, too, that that behavior in men is trained behavior. Mm-hmm. That's what we talk about, men are groomed the way that you word it, that we are taught to act that way. That is that is conditioned in us from childhood, right. from our parents. And then when we start dating and our emotions start getting weaponized, it changes things and it makes us become very isolated. And we regress inwards instead of outwards to have our, our conversations. We have... Um, our check-in list is on our website for anybody that cares to look at that. But we started off doing weekly check-ins where she would sit in my lap and we would have a list of questions that we would ask each other and go through and we would start working on things. Now we do it every day. How's your mental health? Like we have brief check-ins throughout the day Mm -hmm. and it's just normal conversation, but we had to learn to talk to each other that way. And now when there's something that happens that neither one of us doesn't like, instead of going, okay, I didn't like that. And then not talking about it. We stop the world and go, okay, that just happened, and it, mm-hmm. I don't like the way that that made me feel. Can we talk about it for a minute? Okay. It doesn't matter if we're in public. Oh, we've done it at family functions. We've done it um, while recording podcasts with other people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We will, we'll pull each other aside and have a conversation about it real quick to correct the behavior because if we notice in the moment that it happened and it made us feel a certain way, one, it can address a trigger mm-hmm. that we may not have known we had. Right. Because I don't know all her triggers. She doesn't know all her triggers. And vice versa. And vice versa. So if that happens, we can go, okay, that's noted. And then after the podcast or whatever we're doing, we can have a real in-depth discussion. Why do you think that's a trigger for you? And then once you understand why the trigger's there, Mm -hmm. the healing can start. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we never take it personally either. It's always like a red flag of, okay, that's something from your past. We need to dissect it versus I can't believe you just said that to me or you just did that to me. Mm, That's good. I need to do that because I withhold and he withholds if we feel something anywhere and Mm -hmm. wait until we're in our own house. But I think that just that makes me angry or it makes him angry the whole time. Right. Because like you're dwelling yeah, on you it. You're dwelling. On it. Yeah. And you're also going the I'm gonna say and he's gonna say and then I'm gonna rebuttal with and, and you can't do that. It's a lot easier to deal with a pebble than it is to deal with a boulder. Mm. So as soon as it starts, if you separate yourselves or ma- even a text message, hey, I just noticed this, it bothered me. Mm-hmm. We need to talk about this when we get home and then go back about your life because it's been addressed. Wow. You know the conversation's coming, there's he's no animosity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I'm gonna take that from here. Yeah. Yeah. I, Thank I you. hope so. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, why do you think men and women commit adultery in a marriage? Basic question, but. So good. I'm going to preface this with my husband and I are extremists when we think of the words of cheating. Okay. If one of us looks at another human being with lust, we consider that cheating. Mm. So we, we are those people. Mm-hmm. So people committing adultery, speaking in my own opinion, I believe it boils down to that there is a void within the marriage or the relationship that's not being met. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it has been discussed and a lot of the times we hear that there's no reciprocation or they don't care to fix the issues. And at that point, when they feel like they don't matter, they start seeking it elsewhere. Yeah. I think that it, I think that natural attraction is, is something that is ingrained in our DNA. People want to look at other people. I think that when you have a watered marriage and things are the way they're supposed to be, mm-hmm. 
um, you can make a choice not to act like that. This comes mm -hmm. down to emotional maturity. If you have everything going in your relationship the way that it should be going, it's a lot easier to shoot that shit down than it is if it's messed up. Right. Yeah, I and I, I think that people become detached quite easily in relationships mm -hmm. because of the amount of attention that can be found on the internet. Very and then, disposable. Yeah. And then the emotional cheating starts, and from the emotional cheating aspect, it becomes physical. Um, but ultimately, I think it comes down to people believe it's okay. And, and you look at society, you, you look at, um, I mean, shit, you, the notebook, the yeah. most famous love story on the planet oh, is wow. about cheating. Yes, it is. Bridges of Madison County is about cheating. I Titanic mean, is cheating. Pearl Harbor is cheating. So all of these big box movie classics that are love wow. stories are all, all based on infidelity. And it's based on women not being happy with the current relationship. Right. And they romanticize it. Right. right. And that happiness um, is put over everything else. Right. Yeah. And then you have the the hijacked red pill movement on the internet where men think that it's yes, natural for that. us to do that. So Yeah, I don't I'm not that I don't believe in that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, neither do we. <laughs> yeah. That's too much that's not even biblical. It's not it's messy. what we're living in. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. And then it's like you're supposed to be one with your partner. I think right. that's what's beautiful. Yeah. You know, and then if you're sharing your partner with other people, how do you feel that oneness? How do you feel super connected to your partner when he's sharing with other women, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that was beautiful. Basic, is any more comments with that question? Mm -hmm. uh, no. I mean, I, that that could be an entire podcast. Oh, it could be. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep it short to. and sweet for you, yeah. No, Lisa. I appreciate that. So one more question with that one then is that do you think it is weak? Because I have um, – Again, I have some friends who are dealing with this. Um, and do you think it is weak uh, on the spouse's part to stay through infidelity? No. I think that's one of the strongest things anybody can do in a relationship is to work through that infidelity. And it is 100% doable. And I don't believe that there's a timeline for that either. What was that book that we read? Worthy, Worthy of, of Her Trust. trust. <laughs> yep. In that book. It's faith-based. It is faith-based. Wow. Okay, i got to read it. In that book, the author's wife, after 10 years, looked at him and said, I'm glad that you cheated on me. Wow. Yeah. Because it, they restructured their whole relationship from it, and they were in a better spot than they were beforehand. Wow. There's a lot of accountability that comes with that, though. There you, is. You know what I mean? And, and we get, we've, we've, we've had some of our most viral videos are about saying, what did you do in the relationship that you can take accountability for if your partner cheated? Yes. Mm -hmm. And people are like, I can't Humble. believe you're blaming the person. Victim and there's a difference between taking accountability and taking blame. Somewhere along the lines, you made a decision, mm -hmm. whether that was to nag or to stay in the garage and drink beer all night long or go party with the guys or whatever it is, there was a decision that was made that created a fork in your relationship that you didn't heal from because it's easier to, to repress yeah. than it is to process, right? So like, that's a whole thing. And you are not responsible for your person. Some people are just ch crappy people mm -hmm. and they cheat. Right. But somewhere along the lines, there was some sort of decision that could have been made that you could have caught that went, wait a minute, this isn't right. And a conversation could have been had. Lines of communications could have been opened to fix that problem. Yeah. So, and we get a lot of hate over that. I, I think that when it comes down to it, you are only responsible for you. You can't yeah. control your person. You can control your actions and your decisions and your decisions are going to be a direct outcome for your life. Mm -hmm. So... If you have somebody in your life that's cheated, you should be breaking down and reflecting on what you've done, whether it's – I'm not yeah. saying that that's the reason they cheated, but if, you're, if your relationship is, is good and you're in love yes. and everything is happy, you're not looking outside of your marriage. Yeah. You're just not. So I've been cheated on, and looking back – not to justify behaviors, I can see why they did it though. Yeah. Why would you want to stay faithful to someone when every time you come home it's a war zone? Yeah. yeah. It's not a, how are you doing today, babe? It's, I can't believe you effing did this again. Yeah. How could you have forgotten to do the laundry when I reminded you four times this week to do it? Belittlement. Yes. And then withholding sex and, well, don't touch me, I'm not in the mood. And then slowly the hand holding goes away and then the kissing stops and, now I'm complaining about you gaming all the time and you're never home. But when you're home, I'm arguing with you. Yeah. No. Yeah. Men I, don't uh, want to come home and have to feel like John Wick in their house. Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, my husband didn't cheat on me, but he said I understand why uh, men do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Because he would come home from work and then stay in his car for two hours. Yeah. And he just didn't want to walk in the door and deal with me. You know what I mean? And so and I, I get it. Yeah, I do. Like, full, full disclosure, we've both cheated in past yeah. relationships, though. It, that yeah. comes down to a self-worth thing too. And that I think that cheating also speaks on narcissism. It does. Because there is a true selfishness in there. there. And, and for some men 
who are in unhappy marriages, who, who are the providers and, and don't want to lose their kids, mm-hmm. don't want to lose their house. Yeah. They think, well, no one's going to know I'm miserable. Why not find something that's going to make me happy? At least I'll have a little bit of happiness in my life because everything else is shit. Yeah. Keep me from offing myself. Right. There's a whole lot that goes into that. Wow. It's it's not a black and white conversation. It's not. And for people who try to make it that way, they're very narrow minded. Yeah. Very. So. Beautiful. And I just yeah. a, a comment to that is one thing you said is how in that book she says, you know, thank you for cheating on me. I tell my husband, thank you for not coming back. Yeah. because I kicked him out and he just decided I'm not going to come back. Mm-hmm. And if he came back, I wouldn't have changed. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't have changed. And so thank you for leaving me. Do you, do you thank your husband uh, a lot for yes. just life things? I'm so grateful for him. I mean, you know, I just, I don't want to, I, I, yeah, I could get emotional too, but yeah. just, I, got, I don't understand how he forgave me. You know, so many people would have. People don't understand how, how far gratitude goes. Like, you know, you, for other than she's an entrepreneur now, but I retired her before we started the podcast. She was a full stay at home wife. Now she puts in about 20 hours a week um, of actual record time. Everything else she does throughout the day as she feels like doing it. And I handle everything else in our lives. So she's not technically a a traditional stay at home wife anymore. Mm -hmm. She's a business owner now. So we're doing that life thing, but I still get, thank you for handling the finances. Thank you for making sure that my car payment's paid. Thank you for putting gas in the car, making sure that the kids are... Are, are taken care of and there's new playgrounds and all of those things. And that little bit of gratitude and her attitude goes a long fuck up, uh, goes a long way for us. <laughs> I, I, I dropped you. the F-bombs really hard in life. Yeah. I'm trying so hard nah. not to do that on your podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'm grateful for you guys. I didn't, I was going to let you guys be you and yeah. I just appreciate you guys for even doing that. That's, yeah. Um, no, I love that. I still work too. I'm a, I, I, I uh, am a Brazilian waxer and, and stuff, so I still work as well. But I just thank him for even just what he does. He leads me. He teaches me. He, I'll say something. He's like, let's break down what that definition is. I, and Or, hey, I don't want you to be easy to manipulate. Yeah. I don't want you to go out in the world and people can easily manipulate you. Or mm-hmm. even how I felt towards certain hate comments over doing the podcast. He was like, you need to be protected. You know, That's why he wanted to be here today. He was like, I, I want to protect you and cover you and um, let's be in our word so that you're mentally super strong you know why you're doing this and i just thank him for even being him you know because yeah. i could be with a loser <laughs> you know oh my gosh. who's like <laughs> who i'm talking i'm coming on podcasts and talking ignorant and, and, yeah. and stupid yeah. and i sound dumb and i'm pushing agendas i'm helping agendas being pushed out there by thinking the way i thought before yeah you know yeah.